The process of building muscle is simultaneously one of the simplest yet most complicated concepts out there. The simple part is that as long as you're lifting weights, you're probably building some degree of muscle, even if only a tiny amount. On the contrary, there are dozens of variables that complicate this equation when you start talking about how to maximize the muscle growth. For example, the number of sets and reps you should do, how long you should rest between sets, whether or not you should train different muscles in different ways, and the list just endlessly goes on. Clearly, this simple concept can quickly turn into a headache. Fortunately, today's video is gonna be focused on simplifying these complicated parts of muscle growth. This way, you'll not only learn the best way to build more muscle by the end of this video, but you'll also walk away without a headache. When determining how you should train a muscle for growth, your main focus should be on how much training volume you dedicate to it each week. Generally, training volume refers simply to the number of sets you do each week that target a specific muscle. For example, if you did four sets of bench press every Monday and Thursday, your weekly chest volume would be eight sets. However, it's extremely important to note that the sets that you count towards your weekly volume must be working sets that are challenging enough to take you near failure. As an added note, volume can also refer to the number of reps you do, although this is generally not important to keep track of, as all of your sets should be within the six to 12 rep range anyways, if your goal is building more muscle. Now that we're clear on exactly what training volume is, it's time to talk about exactly how much you need to grow each muscle group. To start this off, I'm gonna give you a very straightforward answer. 10 to 20 sets per muscle group each week. This is a volume range that is extensively backed by decades of research and you really can't go wrong by sticking within it. However, considering the high end of this range is literally double that of the low end, this clearly warrants a more detailed explanation. In reality, this volume recommendation has a boatload of asterisks next to it. The most important of these concerns, your training experience, training frequency, and individualization. Although this is common knowledge, let's start with training experience. I cannot stress enough how important your training experience is when it comes to determining how much volume you should be doing each week. If you're new to lifting weights, your body is essentially in a hyper responsive mode. This is somewhat of a double edged sword though, as it means that it takes very little to stimulate muscle growth, but it also takes very little to cause extensive fatigue, muscle damage, and soreness. Because of this, beginning lifters should definitely stick to the low end of this 10 to 20 set volume range, or even go below that. For experienced lifters, increasing your volume is a pivotal method of progressive overload. In other words, doing more is directly correlated with seeing better results. This isn't to say you won't see great results by doing 12 challenging sets per muscle group each and every week, but bumping it up to 14 will almost always help you bust through those stubborn plateaus. In fact, there is a solid amount of evidence to suggest that doing up to 30 sets per week can be effective for advanced lifters, although this will be extremely dependent on your ability to recover. In addition to your experience level in the gym, the timing of when you do your 10 to 20 weekly sets is just as important. I'm specifically talking about your training frequency or how often you train a muscle group, such as whether it's once a week, twice a week, or every single day. Although this will be largely influenced by your workout split, the truth of the matter is that doing 16 sets of chest on a single day is never gonna be as effective as doing eight sets of chest on two separate days. This is simply because of the fatigue that develops over the course of a workout, especially once you do more than 10 sets for a single muscle group. Your earlier sets, when you're the most rested, are the most effective, while your latter sets can turn into what's referred to as junk volume, if you're too fatigued to maintain a high level of effort and intensity. With that said, there is one variability that is more important than all the others. Individualization. As you 
you've probably heard countless times before, everyone's body is different. And a major part of this concerns how it responds to stimuli. While it might statistically make the most sense for an extremely advanced lifter to do 20 plus sets a week, their body might respond to only doing 12. This really comes down to your genetics, training intensity, and most importantly, your ability to recover. For example, some of the greatest bodybuilders of all time found massive success by doing an extremely minimal amount of volume each week, a number which was generally less than 10 sets per muscle group. Yet, because of how challenging they made those 10 sets, the stimulus was more than enough to cause considerable muscle growth when paired with their genetics and ability to recover. Simply put, experimenting with different amounts of volume will be crucial for finding out what works best for you specifically. Now, before we wrap all this up, there is one major clarification I need to make. The relationship between volume and muscle growth is one of diminishing returns. If you were to graph this relationship, it would be an ascending line that gradually starts to plateau before trending slightly downwards. In other words, it would look almost like an upside down U shape. This implies a majority of your results come from those first 10 or so sets with any extra volume providing you with marginally more gain. This marginal gain only continues up into a certain point after which you actually start to lose progress if your recovery is not able to keep up with your training volume. For example, you may get 80% of your maximum results from doing 12 sets, 100% from doing 20 sets, but only 90% from doing 25 sets because you were overtraining. This is a very important concept to understand as it shows that more is not always better and that you can still achieve a majority of your muscle growth results while only needing to spend a minority of your time in the gym. So to summarize everything we've discussed in this video, remember these key points. The first of these is that you should be doing 10 to 20 sets per muscle group per week. Remember that only sets you should count though are the challenging ones that take you to near failure. The second key point is to adjust where you are in this 10 to 20 set range based on your training experience and how your body reacts. If you're less experienced, try to stick below 15 sets. If you're more advanced, you'll likely wanna be doing more than 15 sets. Third takeaway is to try to separate your training volume for a specific muscle into at least two separate days. This is to ensure all of your sets are impactful and aren't just you going through the motions for the sake of getting them done. The fourth and final point to summarize this video is to individualize your training volume. If you find that a specific volume hasn't been delivering you your desired results, try increasing it to see if you break through your plateau. If this volume increase proves to be too much and leaves you exhausted and unable to lift with your usual intensity, knock it back down a few sets and see what happens. Remember, the 15 sets you do might be more effective at building muscle than the 30 sets someone else does. Adjust your volume based on your own body's response, not necessarily someone else's. With all that said, hopefully you now have a very solid grasp and understanding of exactly how much volume you should dedicate to each muscle group. Clearly, there's no definitive answer that applies to everyone, as is the case for most topics concerning the body. However, you should now be able to make a very educated decision regarding your own training volume goals. Thanks for watching my video, and as always, get busy, get after it, and God bless.